quorum being pre present, the meeting was called to order at 6.31 p.m. tonight, and we immediately convened an ex executive session to discuss the assistant superintendent position and a successor board member. At this time, I would like to call for a motion and second to both end the executive session and to return to the open meeting. We've got that. We've got that already. We're to the reconvene, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Motion again? Okay. Need a motion again. Yeah. Second again? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Uh, roll call. Ms. Barrett? Here. Ms. Ray? Here. Mr. Hamilton? Here. Ms. Mitchell? Here. Mr. Peters? Mr. Thurber? Mr. Webinaro? Here. And Mr. Peters will come back in. Yes, and um, Mr. Thurber has a recused absence and Mr. Yes. Mr. Hamilton. Mr. Yes. Mr. Hamilton has a recused yes. absence as well. Yes. Illness is on both sides. Okay, I have a motion to approve the agenda with the addenda. Motion. Motion, Mrs. Mitchell. Second. Second, Mr. Webinaro. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Approval of the minutes of the November 8th regular meeting, November 30th special meeting, as written or corrected. Motion. Motion, Mrs. Mitchell. Second, Mrs. Graves. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We have recognition tonight to recognize the drama club for the September 2nd and 3rd performances, Justice Bill's Monsters, Young Adventurers Edition. Cast featured 24 8th through 12th grade students, and there were an additional 20 students involved in the group. The club partnered with Dr. J. Sikora, chair of the SUNY Box Dance Department of Theater and Dance, to assist with fight choreography. Over 400 audience members attended the three performances. Great job, good job, well done. That was great. And we didn't have anything. Do we have any public comment? No, no, nothing on the agenda, and we didn't have anything on. So it's hard to believe we're going to talk about parent conferences. So we got to have parent conferences in November, and they were uh, we had a good turnout on both sides of the campus. And um, I think that we had some really good feedback from our parents in regards to uh, going back to our older model, where we allowed parent conferences to take place in the evening and then the next day for Thanksgiving. Um, teachers appreciated that as well. We also currently are in the process of conducting a uh, district-wide school study um, of, of planning analysis of our learning spaces with our architect, and um, just I just wanted to bring that. I did work with them just before Thanksgiving, um, going through the different types of spaces that we have in um, each one of our buildings, and they're going to be looking at state education department regulations in regards to the size of the spaces um, and what types of learning can happen in those types of spaces. That will be really important information for us as we move forward in, in subsequent years looking at building projects, but also looking at, um, you know, is it, it we're comparing that particular component to uh, another component that I'll be sharing with you as soon as this one's done um, in regards to our enrollment and is our enrollment growing do we have in regards to um, renovating spaces and making spaces that different um, and for better for our students. And the other part about it is, is as you're all aware, the district did move um, our second grade up into the B wing over the summer. Um, and it's really important that we make those types of decisions that um, there's, there's data to support our decisions, right? And then we talk about the types of classrooms. So if we have to move people, we want to make sure those people feel, you know, they understand why. It's not just where the, the superintendent's got a crazy idea and then he wants to like move people around. So I think that that's really going to help us in the process as well. Um, and I did mention um, to Sherry, I was going to talk about it here, and then we'll talk about it again later. Um, but we're thrilled as a, as a school district to have finally come to the end of our super our assistant superintendent search. Um, Shannon Pitcher Boudier is in the back here tonight. Um, Shannon is a New York State educator for um, 25 years, 14 years as an um, educational leader and 11 as a teacher. Most recent role at FDH BOCES as a director of instructional support services. Um, she co-wrote grants and she's been on many statewide committees. And we're thrilled to have Shannon here. I'm thrilled to have you part of our group. And um, so welcome, welcome as well. Yeah, <laughs> We also want to thank the GTDS. Um, oh yes, absolutely. Thank you for remembering, yeah. remembering that. Yeah. Um, Mr. Mason will be here on the 18th. 
plays out a variety of roles throughout the process. So it's, it's been a great atmosphere. Great, thank you. And so she has teachers. In December, we're planning on being quick because there's a concert going on. All right, well, things continue to go well with our regularly scheduled liaison meetings, which is nice. We continue to do our best to be proactive rather than reactive, which, um, although we can't control all circumstances, we're doing that very well. So, um, and to keep the meeting moving in an expeditious fashion, on behalf of the exec council and the members of PAT, we wish you a happy, healthy, and uh, what's the other word? Uh, I wrote happy twice. Holiday season! <laughs> Yay! That was Thank good you. Too. Thank I, you. I am disappointed there's no poem. <laughs> you know, here's the thing. So, you I know, know, I've been pretty busy the last few yeah, yeah. weeks. <laughs> so, even though I did really try to do that today, it just didn't happen. <laughs> well, you have plenty of time holding things Don't worry. and writing poetry. That's right. <laughs> we expect something new year. <laughs> okay, I got you. Okay. She's writing at each Yeah, week. we're down to uh, administrators. So we um, have a report tonight from our uh, principals from three, um, three through 12, and then a presentation on our district's data on three through eight testing, as well as some regions' um, information. So um, I'll turn it over to the principals. She runs out, she, her son is also in the show tonight. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Right. Not today. <laughs> good evening, Board of Education and School Community. I'm Mary Sexton, Intermediate Principal, and joined tonight by Jim Manchester, Middle School Principal, and Matt Berry, High School Principal, to provide an overview of the 2021-22 state testing data, inclusive of the three through eight state assessments in ELA, math, and science, as well as the high school regents test. Two things that we ask you to keep in mind as we review the comparative data. First, the regional scores include 15 of the 16 component districts inclusive of Peru. There is one large comparable district that is not included in the regional scores. We represent 10% of the regional numbers with the remaining 14 districts combining for the remaining 90%. Additionally, regional percentages do not factor in the participation rate, only the scores of the students participating are included in the percentages. So looking at the intermediate beginning with grade three, the first thing that I'd like to highlight because it was an area of focus is we were very much focused on increasing our participation rate and I'm very pleased to share that we increased across all grade levels with third grade hitting 91% in both ELA and math. Um, now more than ever, this is, this is one of our measures of where our students are in relation to the state standards, and this helps to inform our instruction and to identify the specific needs of our students in relation to the standards. So taking a look at the positives with regard to ELA, 81% of our students fell within the level two and three. Um, we know that there are learning gaps that have been created by COVID that we continue to respond to. We also, uh, you know, aside, this is looking at proficiency, but we also measure growth. So we know our students are growing. Um, not completely surprised that we're seeing so many in the two and three range as they're approaching um, grade level proficiency. Um, we were the same or within 3% of the region in those area in level two and three. Um, and then 35% of level two actually fell within five points of level three. An area for growth level one is slightly higher uh, with 2%, we're 2% higher than the region. Um, anytime we see ourselves falling higher in the ones and twos, we are looking to move all of our students towards that four. Um, Math, positives, we were same or within the percent of the region in levels two and three again. Areas for growth, a level one is slightly higher. Uh, we were 3% above the region, that's definitely an area of focus. And then 
We also need to look to increase the number of our students that are scoring a level four. We fell 4% four below the region. So participation in fourth grade, we looked at 90% in ELA, 87% in math, and 86% in science. Positives for ELA in fourth grade, 14% of our level twos fell within five points of level three again. Um, areas for growth increase our level fours, 4%, we fell 4% below the region. And again, we are looking to move our level twos to threes and fours. We fell 8% below the region in level two, so that again is an area of focus that we're addressing. Uh, we'll get to the next steps at the, at the end of the slideshow. Um, in math, our positives include uh, level one being below the region by 8%, and 22% of our level twos fell within five points of level three. Areas for growth, continuing to move to level twos, we were 8% above the region, so we're looking to strengthen there. In science, uh, our positive 87% fell within a level three and four. We were below uh, the region also in level ones. Our area for growth is to move our twos. Uh, we are 4% above the region. So again, looking to move those into the threes and fours. We are also looking at, we, we will not have a science test this year. Next year, we begin a new test and it will be moving to fifth grade. We also it will also be inclusive of investigation, science investigations, um, so that's an area of focus for us as well. And then lastly, but not least, fifth grade, our participation rate, 81% in ELA, 83% in math. This is an increase. We were in the 70, 70 percentiles in previous years, so we did still see a nice jump. We're pleased with that, but we'll continue to focus on increasing that participation. Positives for ELA include level one being below the region by 4% and level three slightly higher by 2%. Areas for growth, um, and I say this because, I mean, we see 30%, even in the region, 34% in a level one. Even though we're, we're close, it's still a high percentage to be in a level one, so that's something that we certainly will be focused on even though it's close. Uh, we need to move our students forward towards that proficiency. Um, so level two, we were a little bit higher than the region, 3% higher in level two as well, so that's an area of focus. Um, so we moved to math, level one was 13% lower than the region, level three was 9% higher than the region, and level four was slightly higher than the region by 1%. Areas of growth, same as ELA, we're looking at moving our percentages out of level one, and level two is higher than the region by 3%. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, as we look at the slides for the middle school, uh, the first thing I just want to draw your attention to is participation rates, similar to what um, Mary did for grades three, four, and five. I found with the middle school, it depended, the participation rate depended on when the test was taken. So in other words, ELA was the first test offered, and then math, then science, and you will see in all three slides, there was a decline in participation as you move from ELA to math and then science. My assumption is students saw their peers uh, not taking the exam and then told mom and dad, you know, hey, can I opt out as well? So. It's just uh, one of the trends that um, we picked up on as we looked at the data. As far as uh, grade six, you know, the highlights is that we had uh, our grade, our level three and fours were higher than the regional for math, which coincided with less ones and twos. Uh, one of the things that we do want to move up, uh, the level ones, we had a significant number that um, we'd like to see move higher up on that, that chart as well. Looking at grade seven, um, this group was for the most part on par with the region. Um, we had quite a few level three and fours uh, in ELA. You'll see that that was higher when you look at the combined percentages um, in ELA. Uh, even though we were on par as far as areas of growth, 
We want to again make sure that our math scores move up. We hit 77 percent that fell in that level one and two range. So those are that's an area that we want to target to try and hopefully move move us higher up on the scale again. For grade eight, and again you'll notice this gives you like the full three test of scores as far as participation rates, and you can see where. Um, it, it took steps down every time the test was in, uh, administered. So ELA was offered in uh, March, math was in May, and then science was also a little in, in uh, June actually with the performance test in May. So direct correlation between when it was administered. Um, the students in this cohort did do well on the science exam, which was a positive. Uh, but again, we're looking for areas of growth, so we want to keep our lessons on par with those next-gen standards, especially in math. Um, we've got to make some improvements there. Uh, we did introduce, for the start of this school year, we do have a new math, instru math instruction that we've um, used for the, all three grade levels, as well as in the um, elementary. Uh, so we're hoping that we'll bear some fruit with that. Uh, but we also want to work to improve the participation rates I've talked about. So on to the Regents data at the high school level, um, I think one thing that I don't envy my, my counterparts here is that everybody has to take these exams. <laughs> so the, the data obviously is, is the cohort. Um, I'd like to start out with the positives if you look on the left column and the the bottom, I, I really want to spend some time on this. Please draw your attention to level fives on the ELA exam. Half of our students who took that exam had mastery after not really having, even though they, they have the participation rate battle through COVID, you really didn't have to take the exam. Um, so these students continued to battle through and then uh, kudos to the teachers for um, the curriculum work that they've done. They worked hard on it, not just at the 11th grade level, but as a team from nine, nine through uh, 12, really. Um, the Global Studies exams falls on par with our aggregate vote to see schools for levels two through four. And I think areas of growth and opportunity, after speaking with the ELA teachers, they said, you know, we'd love to see 0% in, as an opportunity to see 0% in level ones, uh, which I think would be a, a, a huge, huge uh, goal for them and, and accomplishment. Global, global Studies exam, I think it should be a focus to shift, just shift that curve and bring level ones down, fives up, uh, and everywhere in between and hopefully have that, that growth be something that is attainable. Math um, was interesting as three, fours, and fives on algebra one and two, uh, they compare with BOCES as a whole, we have a higher percentage there. Um, they're meeting or exceeding those expectations compared to our, our counterparts in the area. Uh, that was a, a, a nice focus to have. And a lower percentage of Peru students scored level one on the geometry exam when compared to our aggregate cohorts in the area. Um, three, four, fives, again, on par. And, and talking with the math department, too, they would like to just, you know, as an overall goal, goal through their curriculum planning work, um, shift the curve, you know, and, and certainly something that they see as attainable. Science regents exams. Um, with, with a shift, a few things, uh, well, one thing to note, if you see the asterisks at the bottom, there are students at each one of those exams who've attained a level five. Uh, they, with, with the data extrapolated to how it was, it doesn't meet a full data point to be registered on, on any of this. And if you look across the, the neighboring areas, it's the same for all schools. Um, our level four and five responses are on par with nearby schools on the Earth Science exam. Uh, living environment exam, our level three responses, proficiency, is half the population, so half the population is reaching proficiency. And our, our chemistry scores uh, at a level three and four align with our neighboring schools as well. Um, and if, to note our physics exam, and if you don't know the challenge behind the physics exam is, these are seniors, and a lot of them have been accepted into their colleges, and a lot of them have already um, enjoyed the nice weather of May and June, and won't necessarily sit for that exam. Uh, but all, with that even being said, half of our students uh, have a level four on that exam as well. So those are some good highlights, and obviously, you know, we don't like to see some of those level one numbers where they are, uh, and that's been a focus of our, of our science department uh, as a whole, aligned with the new um, 
next gen standards that are coming out for science as well, and more of these um, critical thinking responses and evaluative responses rather than the rote memorization. So there's a, also a shift there um, in both the exam and in the curriculum that we're delivering. So next step, I think, yep. Um, so in the primary, um, and we, the reason we're including primary, primary feeds into every other level following it. It's foundational. So there is, an, there has been an expansion of math intervention services in grades one and two for both moderate and high level students. Um, we are taking part in data analysis second grade through fifth grade with um, grade level teams with the support of our data coach. We have targeted ELA instruction in grades three and four through our Walk to Read program. That's inclusive of our Wonders program. There are specific reading skills that each grade is working on, or each grouping is working on, which also can include an enrichment. And that each group is also completing weekly written responses to reading as well to continue developing their writing. Uh, we do have the Walk to Read program is an hour dedicated block, and we also have a half hour in addition to that, and half an hour writing block for each uh, grade level. We have, um, as Jim referenced, we have our into math curriculum, similar to what Matt was just reflecting on. Um, we have found that the into math curriculum is reading heavy. However, uh, we are finding that even though there's less rote memorization with regards to our math back fluency, um, we, there is a greater depth of knowledge that our students are able to achieve through it. Um, that being said, we still know that math back fluency is important, so we continue to incorporate that with a specific block of time in each of our grade levels, and they're utilizing Rocket Math, Math Accelerator for that. We also have um, extended day programs that have been proposed that target key skills in literacy, math, writing, and also team activities. So for um, the secondary, which is all the way to the right, we try to, again, tie the district goals into our next steps. You'll notice in the first couple of bullets, the term GIST is referenced. That is a program that uh, some teachers came up with, um, basically meaning give yourself some time. Uh, it ties in with our mandatory 10th period. So when we look at the, the goals that we have for the next steps, we want to identify the chronically absent students and connect them to that GIST program, so get them to stay after uh, for 10th period with our, our staff. We're looking to further develop uh, the middle school and high school 10th period program to address students who are failing behind or chronically absent. Uh, data, data analysis per department in the high school, in the middle school, it's nice that we both have um, department chairs in both middle and high school, we can do that now. Uh, we're going to continue to focus on reading strategies across disciplines and specific to the high school, we want to grow the grad coach program. And then uh, district-wide across all grade levels, uh, I think one thing that we as an administration, administrative team have discussed is that the, the goals that all of you approved were like, tangible, useful, and can help us um, across the board, not just putting these goals down and saying, we're gonna do this about these goals, and we're gonna do something separate about these test scores. I think it was nice um, that we can take the, the goals that were approved and use learning targets to define our objectives monitor and address the instances of chronic absenteeism, opening up our communication uh, through Parent Square and other avenues, maximize our partners at Sweethearts and Heroes, positive school climate, connectedness, relationship building, increased attendance and engagement through those avenues, explore alternatives and creative scheduling to maximize student attention. Um, you know, hit rewind a little bit before the pandemic did hit, we were talking about these things. We were talking about different scheduling. We are talking about different start times. and. Um, grading policies and, and doing things a little bit differently. Um, aligning curriculum both vertically and horizontally to address our possible gaps. Um, analyze aggregate and disaggregate data to determine where students need lies. And then obviously um, utilizing our partners at CVES to continue to identify our, our focus and the shift in standards, uh, our learning targets, and our curricular goals, uh, pre-K-12 really. Thank, Thank you. you very much.
Thank you. Yeah. I have just a few questions. <laughs> I wrote them down, so I'm afraid. Um, what's grade level for three through eight? You said, is that a three or a two? Three is for fifth grade. Three. And in the eighth grade of science, was it weighted if they took the region? Does that count as Correct. Missing? If they took they algebra or, or science, they didn't have to take the exam. Okay, but that counts in that missing, you know how you said the numbers got smaller? So wouldn't that count towards the percentage of the cohort? Or are they in a different So cohort? I'm not sure how it would have been captured in that data, but when it, it would be entered as a reason for not testing is because they were taking a state exam. Okay, so that may have in like skewed the percentage. It would have skewed the percentage for participation. It may have. Okay, and then what, you said a five is mastery? 85 or above. 85 or above? Yeah. They added five, they added so level five, what, two years ago? Okay, and then what's a three? Because you said that was grade level, right? That's just. That's going to be 65 to 75. So passing. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, on to the consent agenda. I have a motion to accept A through I. Motion, Mr. Mitchell. Second, Second Mr. Borgonero. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Consent agenda A through H. We have a motion. We have a demo, right? What? For 15, we have a demo, right? Yes, I'm on 14. Oh, I'm sorry. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> I can't jump ahead yet. It's not that long of a meeting. Come on. The challenge was one hour. <laughs> Consent agenda A through H, 14. Move it. Motion, Mrs. Mitchell. Second. Mr. Graves. All, right. All in favor? All right. Any discussion? All in favor? All right. Okay. Motion oh, carried. Okay. 15. A through K. <laughs> in addition to H. And um, the agenda, or A through L, I'm sorry, um, adopt the resolution about uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Boyer. Boyer. And A, so A through L with that addition in H, and then the resolution. I have a motion. Move. <laughs> motion, Mrs. Gray. Second. Second, Mr. Peters. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Opposed? Yes. Congratulations <laughs> and welcome aboard. <laughs> Get in January. Sounds great. Awkward. Isn't that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, 16. Make sure I'm on the right number now. <laughs> 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 I've got our own <laughs> Okay. Um, and you don't really yeah. need to act on 16. You can if you would like. If you're not oh, it's my thing. Well, maybe act just on good faith of, of accepting that code there, 642 for our food service management service. Yes. So I have a motion to accept that. Mm -hmm. Mr. Peters, to second, Mr. Bovenero. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. And 17, we'll each one individually. Yep. 17, we have uh, B and C on the agenda. So new, mo uh, new business A, 17A, the um, agreement with cooperative extension. A motion. Motion, Mrs. Mitchell. Second. Second, Mr. Robinero. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? <laughs> we'll be carried. <laughs> I bet a long road. <laughs> yeah, I bet I have. Okay, um, and we have the resignation of our school board member on 17B, Mr. Thurber, as he goes on to another uh, role in our community as a judge. So we're sorry to see Mr. Thurber leave, and tonight he couldn't be here, but we thank him for all of his service, and Mrs. Thurber could tell him that. He maybe watched the video, but we did thank him. <laughs> so motion to accept that. Motion, Mrs. Mitchell, second. Mr. Webinero, all in favor? Aye. Motion carries. And then we have um, the resolution to, in 17C, that we're going to appoint a qualified person to fill the board member vacancy created by Mr. Thurber in our um, for the January 10th through May 16th uh, meetings and we'll do that in January. I have a motion. Move. Motion Mrs. Gray. Second Mr. Robinero. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, do we have any public comment? If not uh, anything that wasn't on the agenda. No? Okay. And we don't need an executive session. Oh, we don't
got our we've got our budget development timetable that was in in the report. So, Mr. Peters. Motion. Motion to adjourn. We have a second. <laughs> second. <laughs> Great. All in favor? Uh, Who's okay. waiting on that? What is Gary? Who's right on that? I know. Uh, you know, I know what he's doing. <clears throat> so that's a good challenge for an hour, right? 34 minutes. They took up 24 minutes. <laughs> 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 Mr. Barry, that question. <laughs> 34 minutes and you took up 24. Wow. <laughs> yes, the, your report. The admin report. Just saying. And if you I would like the officials to find people. Oh, maybe it was free wine. Uh, maybe it was free. We've only been here for 30 minutes. Well, then it might be. It was not free. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah,